Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth. So by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. I welcome you here on this, uh, the third Sunday after Easter. And sadly, all of our lilies are outside on the side of the church. Uh, if anybody would like to take a lily home with you, please do. Uh, they come right back by the end of uh, like August. You have some beautiful flowers outside. And so if you'd like, they're all over there. Take one, take two, take three. Uh, it's just a shame to have to just throw them on the compost pile. Um, and speaking of all that outdoor stuff, all that yellow around, I'm, my eye is watered, my nose is clogged, I have no voice. Uh, so uh, we'll do the best that we can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, oh my, I, I can't even see, it's all blurry and stuff. I was at uh, Sarah Hollis' wedding yesterday, so we were outside all day and just breathing in all that, and so now I'm paying the price. Uh, but I know you guys love this weather, so I'm just waiting for the first snow. Um, but anyway, as you do gather to celebrate this mystery that is Easter, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Shepherd, you call us by name and lead us. 
Do you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever? The lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Like a shepherd, he keeps his flock, and his arms, he gathers the lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherd, the flock he died. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. Truly I say to you, said Jesus, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, who climbs over the fence elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All of you who, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come and go and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and to slaughter and to destroy. I came they may have life and have it more abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Christian faith. 
And that's why it became one of the first images of Christian art. If you go home, you do one of those Google searches, and you type in Priscilla's catacombs in Rome, you'll see there an example of one of the earliest pieces of Christian art anywhere in the world, and it's of the Good Shepherd, and Jesus looks extremely young, Jesus looks extremely ordinary. And there's a couple of sheep beside him, he has one over his shoulders that he's carrying, and that painting of Jesus may only be about a hundred years after the life of Jesus. So this is the very beginning of Christian art, and like I said, Jesus is exceptionally ordinary. And really, that's not all that extraordinary. If you remember last Sunday's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter's speech there was very, very early Christian proclamation. And it spoke about Jesus as a man. It then became Jeter, Peter's job to convince those people in Jerusalem that this man was also more than a man, that Jesus was the Son of God, and you could only see that though through eyes of faith. Peter had to make the case for faith for seeing with the eyes of the soul because Jesus was so ordinary looking. Because the people of Jerusalem, they only saw Jesus the man, and the ones who could then see him as more than that, that was the birth of the church. You know, Jesus didn't walk around with a halo. He didn't kind of glide and hover over the ground. He had to walk. His feet got dirty. And sometimes we're so used to thinking of Jesus as the all-powerful one in heaven that we sometimes forget that those first Christians knew Jesus personally as a man. So what's interesting in that painting of Jesus as the Good Shepherd in Priscilla's catacomb is that he, that simple, ordinary, young-looking Jesus, that's her hope for eternal life. There's a woman depicted there. Maybe it's even Priscilla herself. On one side, she's getting married. On the other, she's giving birth to a child. And in the center, she's got her arms raised like this in prayer and adoration. And what she's pointing to is that Jesus, the ordinary good shepherd, no halo, just a young-looking man carrying that sheep. So the earliest Christians had heard that story of the Good Shepherd. They knew the account of Jesus caring for the sheep, but not only for his sheep alone, but for all of the sheep. And the story seems to be based on the practice from Palestine that shepherds of these smaller type flocks, they would bed their sheep down together in a common corral. And the gatekeeper would allow the shepherds to come in in the morning, and the shepherds would call the sheep, and the sheep that recognized that shepherd's voice, they would follow him and they would leave the corral and go out to pasture. But Jesus, the good shepherd, we're going to find out, he wasn't only concerned about his sheep. He was concerned about all of the sheep because he says that there are some thieves that will come not through the gate but over the fence and steal the sheep. And Jesus isn't only worried about his own, he's worried about every one of those sheep. It is the very nature of Jesus, the good shepherd, to care for us all, not only the ones who follow him. It's a very very compassionate God. It's the very nature of God that he cares for us. Even if we don't respond to him, he still cares for us. The earliest Christians heard this story. And they heard in it a story of hope. And that's why that good shepherd, is Priscilla, has her arms raised like this, going to that Jesus the good shepherd. It's not Jesus on the cross. It's not Jesus glorified in heaven. It's Jesus, that simple good shepherd. And they gave those people who were grieving the death of a loved one, it gave them that message of hope that ours is a God of such unbelievable compassion. And this moves our Easter attention past the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And it lets us consider the teaching that when God raised Jesus, he ratified everything that Jesus said, everything that Jesus did in his life. Jesus was condemned to die because people thought he was a false messiah, that everything he did was blasphemous because he claimed to be something more than they thought he was. And then he was also condemned to die because the politicians back then, Jesus didn't respect their power, their wealth, and the military strength. And because of that, they crucified him with that title over the cross, with INRI, Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. That was an accusation that he tried to replace Rome. And that's why the Romans killed him. And all of those things, are reversed on Easter Sunday when God raises Jesus from the grave. And what we hear then is that that message of the Good Shepherd, that unbelievable compassion, that is the very nature of God himself. So this means that the Good Shepherd is really what God is like. He's not false anything. And it means that when power and might 
And even like in ancient Rome and even today, all of that power versus power that leads to so many problems that we see all around our world <coughs> constantly, that we have instead a simple, ordinary, good shepherd. And just like Priscilla 2,000 years ago, raising her hands and praying to that good shepherd, that's what we do right here, right now. We pray to a God of an extraordinary compassion. We hope to follow when he calls us. But even for those who don't follow him, Jesus cares for them, and so should the church. We have to be able to understand that compassion, and we have to try to replicate it in our lives to be as compassionate as was Jesus. And for these things we pray in the name of the Good Shepherd. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, come. O my Lord, as we gather before your altar, still celebrating the Easter mystery, we offer our prayers for Liz Bridgman, battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own, Alex, a 16-year-old, and Loma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, as all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer our prayers for Frank Sprosky, as offered by the Sprosky, Gates, and Kirkendall families. I offer prayers for Bishop Tom Scott's health and for the strength and well-being of his wife, Catherine. I also offer prayers for Maurice Lizell. Also, uh, we pray for Richard Poe, as offered by the Poe and Foster family. And two-year-old Jack uh, Soleil is offered by Mary Ann Foster. We continue to offer our prayers for Frank Marchant, who is battling cancer, uh, but is doing much better. And maybe, we hope, his uh, cancer has gone into remission again. We offer our prayers and thanks for that. We also ask uh, for our prayers for Jenny Damaris' continued recovery. Uh, she is now at home, and this prayer is being offered by her family. And we ask you, Lord, uh, to hear all the private prayers that we bring before your altar at this time. And I should also ask if there are any prayers from the congregation. And there are. So we also pray, Lord, for all those private prayers that we bring to you. We ask you, Lord, to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to hear those from our parish who are unable to be with us here today, those who are parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation.
I will appoint over you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. Hallelujah. from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacramental bread of the same faith and trust that the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior, when he said to them, I myself the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, you shall live forever. Church receives from you 
imploring you to defend and guide throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the Holy Faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. In you who faith in your holy care, your rule, and our own love, wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of them, to give the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise of the apostles, with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood, just as they believed, professed, and united with you through prayer in this immaculate oblation which you have instituted in the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as the pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hand this holy bread and this precious chalice as a long for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold the giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself and the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, in the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and here the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those whom he loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friend if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word. My Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, I pray that they may be one in us, that the, word, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I living in them, you living in me that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, for I am to see this glory of mine which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hand, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hand. Again, he gave thanks to you, blessed them, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. resurrection and his glorious ascension received from your own gifts and presence a pure offering a holy offering an immaculate offering the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation these gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving revenue we humbly ask you almighty god 
man that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your son to this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your Father's love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy. Though lives patterned after the divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers of their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, with all honor and glory of yours. Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Forever and ever, let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awakened me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives, reigns God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. <laughs> Body and the blood of Christ. 
Seek your servant, because of your command, I will not forget. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you so shepherd your people that they shall not want. Lead us peacefully to your green pasture and refresh us beside your still water. For us who have shared now in this holy banquet of the mass, restore our souls when we do go astray. And always lead us to the path of righteousness for your name's sake. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, the sacrifice is offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in your sight, in the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you, that your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory in the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence. The Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light. Light was the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, for begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son, coming to the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.